In this video we're going to take a look at some of the music from Spain. We're going to look at the difference between flamenco and classical guitar playing. Just scroll to the bottom here, music from Spain. So flamenco is something that you may have heard of, especially if you've been on holiday to Spain. Flamenco is really three art forms in one. It's the song, what the singer sings, the baile, the dance, and the toque, the guitar playing. Flamenco is the music that has been around for a few hundred years and it developed in southern Spain in a region called Andalusia, which has had a mix of people from lots of different parts of the world um, travel there over centuries, over thousands of years, including people from Arabic countries and what they call the Gitanos, who are Gypsy and Romana people. Cante is the song. The verses are like poems, they can be freely flowing or follow strict rhythm patterns called compas. The dancers make sounds with their feet and also with wooden instruments called castanets. Arms are used a lot above the head and around the body. The verses of the songs are like poems, they can be freely flowing or follow strict rhythm patterns called compas. Quite often the rhythms are clapped as well, and that's called palmas, as in the palm of your hand. They can be very complicated rhythms and they don't follow simple four beat patterns like many of the songs that you may know. They're quite often 12 beat patterns. The baile, the dance, the dancers make sounds with their feet and also with wooden instruments called castanets that they click. The arms are used a lot above the head and around the body. And the dancers have spectacular, brightly coloured dresses that flow as they move. The flamenco guitar is slightly smaller and lighter than the classical guitar. It's made from lighter woods. And the main technique or way of playing is called rasquiedo, where the fingers strum a chord at a time, flicking across the strings straight after each other. Um, that's probably the most exciting part of uh, flamenco guitar playing. And we can have a little listen to some rasquiedo right now. The right hand fingers strum a chord in turn close together. Can you hear it at the points marked with the red bracket? I'll play it one more time. And the other thing you might be interested in with that example is that it uses a typical Spanish influenced chord sequence that you quite often hear in music from places like Cuba and South America. Here are some basic flamenco guitar right hand techniques. So I'm going to hold this bottom string with my thumb and then I can use my nails of each finger to play the strings. I can play them on the down stroke and the up stroke. Try two. I quite like to use I and A as well. One thing that's different between flamenco and classical is that we use the little finger as well. So I can play. fingers up into the palm of my hand and flicking them out or just letting them flow out. Now there's another technique that I'm not very good at where you use all four fingers and the thumb as well. So you're using the fingers moving down and the thumb coming back up. The idea is that you keep that going continuously in, in a sort of circular motion.
So what is this pattern? We've got individual letters in this one. Let's have a listen. <laughs> So it's like a ladder of notes going up and down and it has a special pattern. It's called a, a mode. There are lots of different types of modes that have different characteristics. And this one is called the Phrygian mode. Modes come from ancient Greece. They have um, ancient Greek. They have uh, Greek sounding names. If you play on any instrument, a keyboard's a good example. If you play all the white keys from E to the next E, then you will be playing a Phrygian mode. And if you use that as E as the key note, the most important note that you keep coming back to, or you end on, often start on, then you can use these notes to make tunes that sound like they're Spanish. So notes used for melodies in songs or improvising solos are often from the Phrygian mode. This makes flamenco sound like music from the Middle East countries because this pattern of notes is used there as well. And these are Middle East countries that invaded Spain from around 700 onwards. What's this? That was my attempt at improvising a little bit of flamenco music and my version is much simpler than genuine flamenco guitar playing because I'm so used to playing everything in four beat patterns that I can't kind of get away from that. But it starts and ends with chord playing and rasguedo with some melodic improvising in the middle using the notes from the Phrygian mode. And now on to some classical guitar music. What's the difference between classical music and flamenco? In Spain, there are two different types of guitar playing and two different types of guitar, the flamenco guitar and the classical guitar. And the flamenco you've just heard and the classical guitar is a bit different to flamenco. It's more like music from other parts of Europe. We're gonna take a look at a few composers and listen to some of their music. The first one of these is Gaspar Sanz. He lived between 1640 and 1710. And here are some top five facts. Gaspar Sanz was a Spanish composer and priest who lived in Baroque times, which was a time in Europe between 1600 and 1750. Fact number two, his best known work is Canarios for guitar. Fact number three, the guitar developed alongside the lute, which is a, another important European instrument, a plucked string instrument, uh, with a body shaped like a pear. It was very popular in England, but there were other plucked string instruments that were more like the guitar that were developing alongside the lute. Top fact number four, the way Canarios is written suits the way the lute was often played. This gives it a connection to music from other countries in Europe. Top fact number five, one of the features of Spanish music shown in Canarios is the changing between two beat and three beat patterns. You can pick this out when we have a listen. So we've got some questions here. Guess the image. So let's take this first image here of some music written down a long, long time ago. So do we think it's guitar tab for a modern rock song? Or do we think it's a copy of the original score of Canarios by Gaspar Sanz? I think it's the original score. That's right. Is this image a diagram from Gaspar Sanz's instruction book? One of the things he did was to write an instruction book, like a guitar tutor book. Or do we think it's a diagram from a 20th century how to play guitar book? I think it looks like quite an old image. Yes, that's right. And is this a picture of King Louis III of France or a picture of Gaspar Sanz? Well, I'm going to guess it's going to be 
Gaspar Sands. Okay, we can listen to a recording of Canarios. We can follow the score and pick out the shape of the melody, the top line of notes. So we have, this is the score, and there's a tab version underneath, and it will scroll along as the music plays. This line, the top notes, the top dots of the notes are the melody. And later on, we can see if we can pick out any patterns of threes and twos changing. You can also pause the video and have a look to see possibly how to play some of it yourself, even if you just play the melody line, picking out the, the fret numbers on the strings from the tab. going to leave it to you if you want to rewind it a second time and listen um, to pick out the bass notes the bottom line with the stems going down these notes here when we listen we can focus on an individual part if we've got something to look at as well that can help us to pick out that part and you kind of in your head turn up that part a little bit louder so that you can hear it better and now moving on to some time a little bit later on, from 1852 to 1909, lived a very important composer for the guitar. And he was a guitarist and a composer for the guitar. He wrote many, many really beautiful tunes. Um, this is a picture of Francisco Targa, who lived during the Romantic times, 1820 to 1900, and into the 20th century. Fact number two, he composed many beautiful pieces for the classical guitar. Fact number three, his pieces have been used on television as theme tunes and in adverts, as well as what is now said by some to be the most often heard tune in the world, the Nokia tune. Now this would have been for maybe the first decade or so of the 21st century, when one of the most common uh, mobile phones that, that people had was manufactured by a company called Nokia, and they had their own little theme tune, which they used as a ringtone as well. You may not be old enough to remember that, but um, I wonder if you recognise it. You still hear it occasionally because some people still have it on their phones. Fact number four, Tariga's eyesight was damaged when he fell into a ditch as a young child. And fact number five, at the age of 10, he ran away to try to earn his living playing guitar in the coffee houses and restaurants in Barcelona. So this is the first part of Tarragas Grand Valse, and it um, and it has the section that's used as the Nokia tune. It's only a short little pattern. Let's see if you can recognise it. So the little theme that was the Nokia ringtone was um, just the end, the last four bars. And here is another version of it, just those four bars. You can see that it's divided up into three patterns that follow the same rhythm, but different notes and the pattern gets lower each time. Let's have a listen to this version. I wonder how many other tunes that we hear every day were tunes that were written by composers from the past. One of the things you could do now is to research the type of music that you preferred, whether you preferred the flamenco guitar 
or the classical guitar. I'll put some names that you can use to research into the description for the of the video. Two big composers from Spain were Manuel de Falla, who wrote a lot of music for orchestra. So if you like to hear some really exciting music, you could search for him. Or Joaquin Rodrigo wrote a very famous guitar concerto for guitar and orchestra that you might like to have a listen to. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, hope you learned a lot.